Are you setting up Microsoft 365 for your team and wondering how to give them shared access to email, calendars, files, and tasks? Let me tell you, you don't need to set up a bunch of different tools manually. You just need to create a Microsoft 365 group. And the best way to do it is right from the admin center. Let me show you how it works. Hey there, my name is Carlos and I help small businesses all around the world to get most out of their Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace subscription. For more information, visit itwithcarlos.com. Today, I will show you how to create a Microsoft 365 group in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and explain everything that comes with it. Because most new admins don't realize how powerful this feature really is, we will see how to add Microsoft Teams to your Microsoft 365 group. Let's jump in. A Microsoft 365 group is more than just a list of people. When you create one, Microsoft automatically gives your team a shared set of tools. They can collaborate efficiently. Here's what they get created for the group. A shared mailbox, where the whole team can send and receive emails. A shared calendar, useful for meetings, deadlines, and team scheduling. A SharePoint documents library, for storing and sharing files securely. Access to Planner, to manage teams, tasks, and projects. A Share OneNote Notebook, for notes, documentation, and brainstorming. All of these are connected to the group and available to its member. No extra setup needed. To create or use Microsoft 365 Group, the users need a license that includes Exchange Online. This includes most popular Microsoft 365 plans, such as Business Basic, Business Standard, Business Premium, Enterprise E1, E3, or E5. Admins can also control who's allowed to create groups, either by policy or PowerShell. But by default, most users with the right license can create a group on the you restricted. Now let's go step by step through how to create a group from the Admin Center. We will now access the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. On the left, we will find the Admin icon and click on it. Here, we will find Teams and Groups, then Active Teams and Groups. On the right, we will see the section Teams and Microsoft 365 Groups. Underneath, we will find Add a Microsoft 365 Group. We click on it and then we need to give it a name. For this demo, we're going to give it a name, Sales Group. Then we can write the description for the group. I'm just going to write the Sales Team. Then we can click on Next. Now we will assign an owner for this group. I'm going to assign myself. Then I click on Add. If you want, you can add additional owners. In this case, I'm going to be the only owner. Then I click on Next. Here you can add the members for the group by clicking here and you can select the different members that are going to be part of this group. I can select Bob Black. I'm going to add Card. For now, I'm going to leave it like that. You can add additional members at any time. Then I click on Add and then click on Next. Now we'll create the email address for this group. I'm going to create sales team for this group. Here I can decide if I want to make this group public or private. For this example, I'm going just to leave it public. By scrolling down, I will see this option here. Create a team for this group. When creating a Microsoft 365 group, you can take advantage of creating a team as well. This means the group will also be available within Microsoft Teams so all members will have access from their Microsoft Teams apps. If for any reason you uncheck this option and you create it without the team, you will be able to add it later at any time with no problem. I'm going to create it without team access. And then later I will show you how to create it as a team. I'm going to click on Next. And now I'm ready to create the group by clicking here, Create Group. The sales group has now been created. And now I can click on Closed. After refreshing the page, I will find the group here, Sales Group, which email address is salesteams at itbe.cloud. By clicking on the group, I will be able to edit it. 
I can see here the general information, members of the group, and the settings. Under settings, I will be able to modify these options. For example, let people outside the organization email this team. Send copies of team emails and events to team members. And also, don't show the team email address in Outlook. Under the Membership tab, I will be able to add new owners, new members, visitors, and I can see here permissions about the membership. By clicking again on the General, I will find the option to add teams. As you remember, we created this group without teams. But here, I will have the option to add teams. I'm going to add it now. Then click on Add Teams. As we can read here, group members will be able to collaborate together in Microsoft Teams. You can manage Advanced Teams settings in the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. Then we will click on Add Teams. So at this point, a share mailbox has been created and I will have access within Outlook. Also, a OneNote notebook, a SharePoint site, a share calendar, and a planner. Let me show you how we can see the mailbox within Outlook. Now I'm opening Outlook. Now here, I'm going to click on the three dots and I will select Add Share Folders or Mailbox. I'm going to write Sales Team, which is the email address of the group that we created, and we have it here, Sales Group. I click on Continue. Then I closed, I close here. At the bottom, I will see the mailbox, sales group. So I'm having access to the share mailbox of the group. I will also have access to the group by clicking here, go to groups. And if I don't see it here, I can click on discover groups. I will enter sales team. And I have it here, sales group. I can click on join, I can close here, and I have it here. And from this point, I will have access to all the resources. I have the mail here, files, I mean the calendar, and I can see all the members. By clicking on files, I will have access to the SharePoint library. Under event, I will have access to the calendar. I can click on members. If I click above on three members, I will see all the members of this group. I'm going to close this. Now I will open Microsoft Teams by clicking here on the nine little dots and then click on Teams. I will be able to see Teams and Channels. If I scroll down and then click on See All Your Teams, then I can see here the Sales Team group. I can see it here as well on the left. So I can start a conversation with all the teams within Microsoft Teams. So we now saw how to create a group within the Microsoft Admin Center. However, I will be able to create a group also within Outlook. Let me show you how. I will scroll down and then click on Go to Groups. And I will have this button here, New Group. By clicking here, I will be able to give it a name, the description, and then follow the steps to create a new group. So this will allow me to create a group also within Outlook. I'm not going to create another group, so I click on this card. I'm going to switch back to the Microsoft Admin Center. I'm going to close here. I can visualize all my groups here. Here's the one that I just created. I'm going to click here and show all. By scrolling down, I go into the SharePoint Admin Center. Then I will click on Active Sites. And here I will find the SharePoint site that was created with the group. I'm going back to the Admin Center. I scroll down again. Now I'm going to Teams. Then I click on Teams. Manage Teams. By scrolling down. I will also find that sales group team. So as we have seen, when creating the Microsoft 365 group, a share mailbox is created. Also the share calendar, the SharePoint site, 
access to Planner, and a share OneNote notebook. That's it. Your Microsoft 365 group is now active. Behind the scenes, Outlook, SharePoint, Planner, and OneNote are all ready for the team to start using it. Once users are added to the group, here's what they can do. Access the Share Inbox from Outlook. Use the Share Calendar to schedule events. Store and collaborate on files in SharePoint. Manage tasks in Planner. Write or edit notes in OneNote. Everything is permissioned automatically. They get access simple by being a member. And you know what? You can always add or remove members later from the admin center. Now, you might be wondering, isn't it the same as creating a team in Microsoft Teams? Good questions. Here's the difference. When you create a team in Microsoft Teams, it also creates a Microsoft 365 group in the background. But some features, like the share mailbox and calendars, are hiding or not accessible by default. So if you specifically want a share mailbox or you plan to use Outlook and SharePoint more than Teams, then you better create a group directly in the admin center. You can always add a team later if your group needs chat and meetings. Let's quickly recap what we covered. A Microsoft 365 groups includes share email, calendar, file, task, and notes. You can create it easily in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Members automatically get access to all groups' resources. If you are an admin supporting a small business, this is one of the simple and most effective tools to start team collaborating in Microsoft 365. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more tips, and feel free to drop your questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Remember, stay secure in the cloud and keep tech savvy.